Some time ago I was asked to make a video about a 7 segment Arduino clock and I thought, cool, sounds nice. Now everybody knows what an Arduino is, but those 7 segment displays are kinda old school and not often used in modern consumer electronics. But they are very useful if you want to build a small project which only outputs a couple of numbers or letters like a clock, a temperature sensor or the voltage and current of a power supply. So today I will show you how to use those displays with and without an Arduino microcontroller. Firstly, let's take a look at different species of this display. There is a really simple one with only one digit in a case and the more common two digits in one case. And whatever kind of display you get, always check the datasheet to find the pinout. In my case I have a LTS546AG. What do we learn from the datasheet you may ask? First of all, we see that we are basically working with 8 individual LEDs, 7 for the bars and 1 for the decimal point. These LEDs are connected in a common anode configuration. So we have one common plus terminal for all LEDs, which are the pins 3 or 8. Doesn't matter which one I use, both do the same. And here you can also see the pin labeling for the display, just by the way. Now we want to control the bars and the dot. We check the datasheet and see that the bars are labeled from A to G and the dot is DP. We scroll down a bit and there it is. Now we know which pin is which bar and we can use this display to our heart's desire. Just be sure to use 2.1 volts and not 5 volts, but stay tuned for the destruction at the end of the video. But how can we display numbers without a microcontroller? The easy solution is a BCD to 7 segment display driver. I'm using a SN74LS247, which has an active low level which means it is capable of controlling all individual cathodes of our display. If you would use a common cathode display, you would need an active high level. The datasheet tells us where to connect 5 volts and ground, and also how to hook up our bars A to G to the IC. I'm using 220 ohm resistors to connect the bars to the IC to limit the current. If I connect the lamp test pin to ground, all bars should light up and we know everything works. Now we connect lamp test to 5 volts and we have to feed the IC 4 inputs which are A, B, C, D to let it know which number should light up. We can look at the function list to find out which combination of A, B, C, D outputs which number. For example A low, B and C high and D low represents number 6. Great, it works. But how to control those 4 inputs without an Arduino? How about a 4-bit binary counter, the SN74290? Why this counter? Well, it has a BCD count sequence, so these two are pretty easy to combine. As always, I hook up 5 volts to VCC, ground to ground, QA to input A, QB to B, QC to C and QD to D. I also connect QA to clock B to activate the BCD count. And we need to connect ground to pin 13 and 3 to activate the count sequence. Now whenever we connect clock A to ground, the counter goes one up and we see the next number. You can, for example, hook up a push button at clock A and press it whenever someone annoys you during work. This way you have a homemade rage meter. Or you hook up other sensors like a tilt switch or an infrared sensor. There are tons of things to count. It is a great project for people who don't like Arduino and want to start with discrete logic. But for most projects you need more than one digit. I would recommend 4 to keep track of time for example. These displays have 16 LEDs inside and two common anodes to activate either the left or the right digit. Of course we cannot control all 32 LEDs of those two displays with one Arduino. If you watch my videos often, you may already know the solution for the problem. Multiplexing. This way we would only need 12 pins, 8 for the cathodes of all bars and 4 for the common anodes. But that means we already use a lot of the Arduino power just for the display. How about using another IC 
which is especially designed to handle this display. The SAA1064 can do this. One of those can control four digits by multiplexing two digits at a time. And you can connect four of those together, which means 16 digits maximum. It uses the I2C communication protocol, which is supported by the Arduino. For an extra detailed handwritten tutorial about I2C and this IC, I would suggest Tronic Stuff's tutorial. It's awesome. But let's just build the circuit for now. Here is my schematic. We connect pin 1 directly to ground to set the I2C address to 0x70. I use a 2.2 nanofarad capacitor on pin 2 to set the speed for the multiplexing. And I connect a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor between pin 23 and 5 volts and pin 24 and 5 volts as pull up resistors. Pin 23 then connects to A4 on the Arduino and pin 24 to A5. And we need two basic NPN transistors to multiplex. Here I'm using the BC337, which works just fine. The rest wiring is well described in the schematic. When the circuit is done, we need code. And code for I2C is a bit more advanced. So let's use a cool SAA1064 library. If I upload the example code, you can see that all digits do the right thing. Now I can display all kinds of things pretty easily on my display without using too much processing power of the Arduino. As always, feel free to experiment with the library and the IC. I hope you learned something today with this video. As always, you would do me a huge favor if you would give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe and spread the word that there is a crazy guy in a computer screen trying to entertain you. Stay creative and I will see you next time.